In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to get started with StreamYard. This is for the complete beginner. We're gonna be talking about the key features, how to get started, and creating your very first broadcast using StreamYard. So first of all, what is StreamYard? This is a platform where you can live stream. But not only live stream, you can record and have all these different professional features to allow you to scale your brand. If you're a creator, if you're an educator, this is the best tool because it's so simple to get started. If you wanna start, you can actually start for free with StreamYard. If we look at pricing, we can look at what we get. We get the stream that we can, again, go live if we want to. We can do local recordings up to two hours. We can have up to six on-screen participants in two seats. Now, what are seats? Invite a team member to your account as an admin or a co-host. So that will really help you if you have people behind the scenes, all of those different things. Then we have the basic plan and professional. Now these are all under the individual plans, but this allows you to scale your brand, especially if you're an individual creator or educator. For the basic plan, you're gonna be able to now have the logo taken away. You can stream up to three places. You can have overlays, logos, and we'll show you that when you get started. You can have 10 on-screen participants. You can have pre-recorded streams up to one hour, unlimited streams and we'll go into the more detailed ones in a little bit. But just to remember, you can start for free to really get used to the workflow and then scale up where it's appropriate for your business. So let's get started. We see that this is perfect if you're going to be creating your live stream, if you're going to have a podcast that you wanna record, you're just gonna record and publish later, you can do all of those things and stream to multiple platforms. To get started, you just click the button, get started right here and you're going to sign up. Once I log in, now I'm going to be taken to the main center, my dashboard where I can get started. On the left-hand side, I have home, and then I have library from all my past videos that all my recordings go here. I have my destinations where I can live stream to, and then I have my members of my team or different ones that help me with the program. Now, how can we get started quickly? Well, we can click create, and here, we can decide if we're gonna live stream, for, do a recording, or do an on-air webinar. Depending on what plan we have, that could be an option for you. You could host a webinar on StreamYard or embed it if you choose to. I'm going to choose to record right now. I click record, and here I'm going to say, um, I'm gonna do DIY side hustles. I'm gonna say how to become a live streaming producer. So I have a title right there. I can mark here where it says record locally for each participants. It mentions record separate audio and video files on each user's device. Even if someone has a weak connection, the recordings won't be blurry or choppy. Useful if you need to do a post-production editing. We'll also still create a flat cloud recording. I think that's huge. I always do that if possible. I'm gonna record audio and video. That way I can have a video podcast and I can strip the audio to make it a podcast only, audio podcast only. I'm gonna say create, and then it's gonna take me into the studio. Before we go in the studio, it's going to make a couple, it's gonna ask me for a couple things. For example, allow mic and cam access. I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna allow this. Now here, I'm going to be able to put in my name, Doc Williams, and then I can go into settings and I can change out um, the different settings. So for general, I can do the recording quality. I'm going to have just 1080. Orientation, I'm gonna do landscape, but if I wanna do portrait, if I'm on TikTok or Instagram Live, I can do that as well. Shift videos uh, up for comments and banners, I'm gonna do that. Audio avatars, automatically add shared screens to stream. I'm gonna do that. The camera here, I can decide what I want. The camera right here, we have it on the ZV-E10, or we can switch it over to the other one, which is our Logitech 1080 right there. We're gonna go back. Um, camera resolution, we're gonna keep it high. Uh, touch up appearance, we can do that. See what it looks like. Smooth out some edges if I want to. Oh, okay, that looks nice. Or I can just turn it off. Audio, I'm gonna see default right here. It says ex uh, external microphone. 
but I'm switching over to my Rodecaster Pro Studio so that it can capture the right kind of audio source that I want. Speaker, I'm just doing external headphones, so that way I can just monitor it through my headphones. Um, here it says reduce mic background noise. Improves audio quality by maximizing background noise. I'm going to put that on. And then automatically adjust mic volume. Disable this option to manually adjust your mic volume with the slider. Now, I'm going to, no, I'm just, should I do automatic? No, I'll just do regular. Okay, I'm not going to do virtual backgrounds. Recordings, I already mentioned it. Hotkeys, I don't have to really worry about. But if I want to make sure if I'm broadcasting and I'm doing things live streaming, maybe I want to have the default hotkeys so I can be quicker if I'm producing it myself. Or again, if, um, if I have a producer as well, they're going to be doing that. Okay, so the settings look good. I'm really ready to go. I'm going to say enter studio. Here in the studio, if you notice, it says your audio and video hasn't been added yet. Click to add, uh, it says click add to stage. This allows you to put you on stage. So imagine just like if you're on a stage for a play, you're behind the stage. We can add you to the stage when we're ready. We can decide if it's going to be one person, if we're going to be shifting to the layout for two. And it mentions right there cropped layout. We're just going to have group layout. Then we can have spotlight layout as well. Um, also news layout. So there's tons of different ones and we'll look at it in a second. But for right now, I just have that. I'm going to bring myself on the screen in a second for a moment. But I can edit the layout if I want to. It says uh, add an item, dynamic camera. I can do camera slot, media slot. So a single media slot. This slot can display items to the present menu, such as slides, screens, shares, and videos. A maximum of one per layout. Don't worry, I'm, I'm going to hold off on that for a moment. I'm right here. So I know I can add myself to the screen right here. This is great. I'm on the screen. I can remove myself and come off the screen. This is important. Your audio was also removed. Add yourself back and use the layout button if you want to maximize a guest slash screen without losing audio. Got it. Next up, that's the basics. If we go to the right hand side, we have banners. We can create banners. We can have all different types of banners where we can have scroll across. You can say I like pie. Scroll at the bottom of the ticker. Oop, spelled pie wrong. Or didn't have a space. Okay, save. Okay, show. And then we can have that right there, right? So we can add things right there to that ticker. We're going to take it off, delete it. We can have brand right here. So we can have the theme, what do we want, logos. And then here also too, I have overlays such as like build freedom DIY. When we're talking about a lot of things over and over again, I have a lot of different slides I'll go back and forth with. Um, also too, we can have um, video clips. We can decide if we're going to loop them or not. This is one of our older ones. It's a countdown before we go live, all of those different things. When we're live streaming, we can have that and, uh, and then go from there. Also, when we had another one for the crypto show, uh, we had a breakdown there. And again, allows you to decide what you're going to be doing um, for your for your brand. You can have backgrounds right here, and we just have a default there, but we can show and switch over. We like that one. We can have background music and go from there. So when we want to get started, first, we can add to the screen. So we're on the screen. Hello, everybody. And then what we're going to do is present. So I'm going to take myself off right there. We're going to present. We're going to go with screen share. Here I can pick a Chrome tab window. I'm going to pick a, uh, I'm going to pick a window in the other screen. Okay, so you can see that. And then I'm going to bring myself on the stage. So what I'm going to do, okay, so here I have the one shot that I'm here. But if I want to have a screen as well, I can always have this format. I can switch over. 
I can change to over here. So now it's going to be more here. And then when I switch over, I can do this or I can just disappear completely. Right. So this is really good. If you're going to be screen sharing, explaining a lot of things, you can easily do different formats that are easy. If you've heard of like OBS, open broadcast systems and things like that, there's a lot of more intricate things you can do, but this is so easy for you to get started for you to manage the screens, all of those things. And then if I want to uh, re remove myself off the screen, I can do that and then I can remove the screen share as well. Once I have everything I'm looking for, I'm going to add myself to stage Add all of this. I'm ready to record. I can record right here. And this allows me to record um, to the cloud. So it saves into my account and I can save locally. So when I'm ready to go, I can click record. It's going to count me down and then it's going to start recording right here. So we have the timer right there at the top and say, for instance, I'm going through something, uh, I'm talking about, Hey, I really like this certain website or this certain tool that I'm using. And then I mess up, right? Or I want to restart it. So if I mess up or I need to grab something, I can pause, right? And that will pause it. If I need to restart it, I can, or I can just cancel it. So let's see if I want to restart it. It'll ask me, restart the recording. Are you sure you want to restart the recording? Your current recording will be discarded. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say restart. So now I'm starting and now I'm like, okay, this is my new, this is my new video. Thanks so much for watching. This is your boy, Doc Williams. And we're going to be talking about StreamYard today, right? So I have all of that. If I'm done, I'm going to say end recording. Ask me how um, the recording has ended. How did it go? I'm going to say good. Everything worked well. I'm going to add send feedback. Close feedback. And if you look at right here, the upload time, it tells me all, all recordings have successfully uploaded. So I can view the recordings right here. So I can return back to dashboard or just view recordings. So here now I have the recordings, the completed recording. I can review how it went. I can download it. I can download the recording. I can export it, download all of the different files. Remember, I, I had all different types. So I'll have the audio, video, all those things. Or if I messed up something, I want to cut the beginning or something like that. Or if I want to make clips or repurpose it, I can say edit and repurpose. In here, I can edit the video or I can make shorts and reels. If I do a video here, it's going to take me to the timeline and be able to not only have the transcript, um, too short. So video must be 30 seconds to generate transcript. That's okay. Um, I can look through what I want to scrub, what I want to cut out. I can zoom in, I can cut out different things right here. Maybe I want to start right here. And then when I'm done, I can publish it or I can just save as new. So that way I have another version of it. But say for instance, I want to go back and I want to, I'm going to discard changes. Say for instance, I want to edit and repurpose, but I want to do shorts and rails. I click that here. And then now you see how it changed to vertical and I can do that and publish and have all of those things. So now I can start having clips there. And that's really how you can start using StreamYard. That allows you to, again, record. If you're going to be inviting people to your um, stream, you can do that as well. Um, or you can live stream. So let's go through one more. So that's the process of doing it just for yourself as a solo creator. But what if you want to invite someone? Right. So we're going to look at a project for a second. We're going to enter their studio. Say, for instance, you set it up the way you want. We're going to enter the studio. But say you want to invite someone. Well, you can click the invite button here and copy it. And now you can have up to 10 people on screen at once. So you can invite them and uh, they can enter as a guest. And what I love about this StreamYard, it's web browser based. So they don't have to download anything. They can just get, you know, get started, add the permissions and jump in. I love that. I love that feature because there's so many guests that, okay, what do I have to download all those things? So you can do that. And then to live stream, very similar to how we record, but on live streaming, 
you're going to now pick your destination. I'm going to pick two destinations. I'm going to add a title. How to start building a micro empire. For certain destinations, you need a description too. So I'm just going to copy and paste the same name. For this, I'm not going to schedule for later. I'm just going to start right now. But scheduling for later, you can upload a thumbnail if you want. You can schedule it. That way, if you're using YouTube or others, people can start seeing when you're going to be live next. Also, too, look at this. The source. We can decide to do the source. It says most live streams use the studio. Select pre-recorded if you have a recording you want to stream without you being there. I usually do studio, but if you want to pre-record, you can select the video and go from there. I just usually go in studio, customize your destination. It shows us what's going to happen for the destinations. We can switch it. We can switch it to unlisted. We can do public, whatever. Then it says create live stream. Now, just because you say create live stream, it doesn't, going, it doesn't mean that it's going to start right away on the live stream, right? We're going to go through the same process, making sure we have everything. And then when we're ready, we can pick what we're going to put on the screen, put ourselves on the screen, and then we can decide to go live. If you notice, even when we say go live, it's going to give us the option to go live. It's going to stream at 1080 right now. If it changes in the future or if it goes up to 4K, we can change it. If that's an option to be determined, we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. But also local recordings, we can decide to turn it on or off. That just means when it streams, do we want it to also automatically save to our computer or do we just want it to just stream in whatever platform it's on? We're going to capture it there. Up to you. You go live when you're ready, and that is how you go live using StreamYard. Allows you to have the best of both worlds. Allows you to streamline your operations, but it gives you powerful features and tools to build your brand to really scale and do it in a simple and concise way. In the comment section down below, let me know what you're planning to do. Are you going to be live streaming? Are you going to be creating videos and edit it? Maybe you're going to add more effects in CapCut or something like that. Or are you just going to make your videos and then put them out to the world? Uh, truth be told, more than 95% of our videos and the ones that did well, we were just using StreamYard to get started. So we're a huge fan of them. Uh, it's simple. It keeps getting better and better. So in the comment section, let us know what you're trying to create, what kind of business you're running, where you are in your ideas, and we'll see you in the next video.